Hello and welcome to this video. In this video, we're gonna look at a really highly requested feature, which is basically how do we simplify getting eBay managed payments into QuickBooks. Hello and welcome to this video. My name is Aaron Patrick, Chartered Accountant, Certified UK Trainer and also that QuickBooks chap. On one of my most recent videos, I showed how to put an eBay managed payments transaction into QuickBooks. Now at the time I explained how it was a long winded process, but I wanted to show the principles. I wanted to show why we're doing it. And as a quick recap, the reason it's so important is when you receive money into your bank account from eBay managed payments, it's net of any fees. Therefore, you can't show that as your total income because your total income has to be the total that was sold. So it has to be the gross amount. If you just show your net fees, you're understating your income. Therefore, you can give yourself issues like VAT registration and things like that. So we need to be showing the gross amount coming into QuickBooks and then the fees as an expense later down the line. And as I showed in that last video, the printable transactions are quite long winded. So in this video, I'm gonna give you three ways you can make that process so much easier. One of the ways is using a template I've created and Boffix have created, where you download the transactions from eBay, put it into QuickBooks, and your job done. The second is by using a software, but, it, but be warned it's paid for. And the third one I'll talk about at the end, which is outsourcing this and making your life so much easier. So the first option, Good news about this option, this is for any version of QuickBooks. So that's QuickBooks Online, all three tiers, and also QuickBooks Self-Employed. The first version is all about taking that data that eBay gives us and put it into something that QuickBooks can understand. And depending on if you're on QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Self-Employed, depends on what type of information you need to convert that into. Well, instead of you having to convert all that information, I've done the hard work, and with my friends at Boffix, we've created a template for you guys to utilize, where basically you throw the information in, that then gets converted into something QuickBooks can understand. And it's really, really quick and simple. Now, as and when you do this process is completely up to you. We've limited it to around about 200 transactions for now, but we can extend that at any point. The limitation though, is gonna be how much QuickBooks lets you put in. So QuickBooks doesn't allow you to put tens of thousands of transactions there's normally a limit of about 1,000 transactions. To give you some concept, every time you sell one item on eBay, that converts into four transactions in QuickBooks. So as you can see, we need to make sure we don't overload it in any way. So my advice to this, would we'll probably do this on a week by week basis. That should give you more than enough in terms of, of being able to put that information in and it only takes five minutes to do. So you're gonna see how quick and easy it is. Now, on the very first time you do this, there's a tiny bit of setup to do as well, but don't worry, I've got all that information for you, and the link to all this is just down below. So let's start and see what happens when you click that link from day one. Okay, so let's first emulate what will happen when you click on the link below. When you click on the link below, it's gonna ask you to basically put in an email address. This is our way of protecting this document so it doesn't just get taken apart and then started to be abused. So all I'm gonna do is just put an email address in. I agree with communication and press submit. This will give you access to my, our eBay to QBO fact sheet. And we'll change this over time, but let's have a look about what it is so far. Basically on here, the first page is all about giving you instructions. So it depends if you're on QuickBooks Online or QuickBooks Self-Employed. As you can see, if you're on QuickBooks Online, there's a few extra steps for you to look into, but nothing major. And if you're on QuickBooks Self-Employed, then it's just a quick conversion. So the first time you utilize this method, you need to prep your file. So the prep file is what we call pre-upload work. So the first thing is create an undeposited funds chart of account. Now that might seem daunting, but we've give you a nice little link here to a video, which is gonna show you in much more detail. But let me just show you on this video exactly how that's done. Now I'm gonna use a brand new file. So I can, you can see this straight from scratch. So our first job is to create a brand new account. So I go to chart of accounts, see my chart of accounts. I press the new button in the top right hand corner. I'm gonna drop this down, the account type to current assets. 
From current assets, my detail type, and you scroll down to under positive funds. I'm going to leave this name exactly as it is, but effectively I'm creating an undeposited funds account. Press save. Think of undeposited funds as your holding area. As money is coming into QuickBooks, as the money comes in from eBay to QuickBooks, you're just going to leave it in undeposited funds. And then when it hits the bank account, we can match it up nice and quickly. Upload section one, create an undeposited account. The next one is you need to import some products and services. So we've given the file on here. So all I need to do now is go to tools, import data, products and services, browse, and then I will just put in my eBay managed payments products and services file. Press next, press next, and press import. And that's it, our file is now set up to use our importing option. So those items there have basically given us where to post the transactions in QuickBooks and also what to do with them. Now, if you ever want to go in and change the way the functionality is working, then under products and services now, you have eBay managed fees, eBay managed fee, eBay managed payments income, and eBay managed pay, payments postage income. And if you want to edit any of these, you press the edit button, and the income account down here can be changed to whatever you want it to do. And you can retrospectively do this as well. So if you've already imported a load of transactions up to this point, you can go back and you can change them to wherever you want. So maybe you want your postage fees separate, at the moment, I've put the eBay fees against bank charges because I know you'll always have that. But you can put, you can create any account you want to show that if you need to. Okay, so at this point, I've got my pre-upload all set up for us. Now our pre-upload set up for us, we now need to concentrate on how do we get the data. So first of all, let's go and retrieve the data. So I'm going to get myself into eBay. And from eBay, I'm going to log myself in. And I'm going to go to my selling hub. From my selling hub, I have a payments option, and from payments option, I have reports. Now, in this sample file, I only have three transactions, but it all works within this sort of idea. All you need to do is, at the top here, you need to make sure you've got transaction report selected. You do your start date, end date, and create report. It will then take a couple of minutes to work its magic, and you'll have the option to download it, or you get an email to download it as well. So once I'm happy with that, I press download and my transaction report is ready. And this is the file that we looked at in that last one where it's giving us all the information. Now the problem is we can't just import this as it is. We need to convert it into something that QuickBooks can understand. So it doesn't matter if there's only three or if there's a hundred transactions, the same principle now applies. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to go to my conversion tool because on here I have a conversion file just here. Now with regards to this conversion file you have two options of accessing it. We made it nice and easy and online by if you have a Google account, be it your YouTube account, any form of Google, then you can access this via Google Sheets. That just means you don't have to download it to your hard drive or anything daft like that and you'll always have the most up-to-date version. We've also given you a link to a file where if you don't have a Google account, just download the file in Excel format and then use the same steps we're doing here, but obviously you'll be doing it on your local machine. So here I'm just gonna sign myself in. So you put your Google account in, then all you need to do is say, make a copy. And here's your own copy of the conversion software. Now at the top, it gives you some instructions of how to do it. We're gonna walk through that anyway. So what we need to do now is basically, as it says, copy and paste it into this box. So I grab the transactions and paste the transactions. <clears throat> we made sure the report works with however you put the data in there. The only key thing you need to make sure is you need to make sure that it doesn't overlap. So if there's any information coming out over the end or if it doesn't go all the way to the end, then at that point, the data's not been put in properly. But it doesn't matter at what point you start the process, the only thing you need to remember is you need to make sure that it fits from a length ways. And also, do make sure that it doesn't fall over this number here. If it falls below there, again, touch with one of us, and we'll be able to look at and put in some extra data in. So that's 200 transactions we're putting at this point. So hopefully that's gonna be enough for a week by week basis. Basically, once the information has been imported, you press the export button, and it converts it into something QuickBooks can easily understand. Okay, now we've got the file. 
all we need to do is do file, download, and you're going to use comma separated files CSV. Now, what we need to do now is jump back into QuickBooks. And from QuickBooks in the top right hand corner, you have the option to go to import data and sales receipts. From here, we're going to find the file we've just downloaded. Open. I would always put the add new contacts on just in case you don't have one for eBay. Press next. And sales receipt is day, month, year, year. Press next. So the only thing we're doing here, everything else is, is okay on this one. So I'm happy with everything else that's here. The only thing we want to be careful of is we've got to change this to day, month, year, year. Press next. So then I'm going to say three new sales receipts imported, one new customer, start the import. And nicely done, okay. Now the way this works is basically in the banking section, see how we've got these three items coming in, £6.58, £26.20, £8.19. Well, it's found them automatically. That's why undeposited funds work so well in this situation. So I can match against it. I'm happy with that. And then all I need to do now, see my reports. And the only transaction I've put into those ones, let's do profit and loss. All dates, run reports. And you can see £48.82 is my net, my gross sales. £7.85 is the cost on those sales and £40.97 is what's there. Now if I click into it, I've got all these opportunities here. I've got all my items, all my postings there properly laid out for me. And again, if I wanted to, I could put posted charge to a different account. And then if I look and that's my gross sales for those particular items. And then from a bank charges, I've got my fixed and variable split out nice if you way. And again, if you want to, you can split them into something other than bank charges, nice and straightforward. That's how you get it into QuickBooks Online, but we also have the opportunity to get it into QuickBooks Self-Employed as well. Okay, so for QuickBooks Self-Employed, we can't just import the sales receipts as we did in the QuickBooks Online. What we can do is add more transactions to the bank. So from that same file, we now have the option to do QuickBooks Self-Employed to click on there. Again, you have the choice. You can either download the document to your hard drive and use that copy there, but you won't have the most up-to-date version. You have to keep going back and downloading new ones in case QuickBooks make any changes or PayPal make any changes. But if you're using it online, so if you just log in with your Google credentials, then it's straightforward again. So I'm gonna be able to paste the information in just like I did before. This time though, it's gonna export it as a bank file. So all I do is I fi do file, download, CSV yet again. Okay, so I've now got a copy of that. So that's gonna be really useful for me. This time round, I've got the transactions coming in, but I need to go to connect, import transactions, import older transactions, browse, grab the file I've just done. So this time it's export bank, press open, press continue, press done. Now that time the transactions have come in and all I need to do, so here they are here, look, I say their business, their business, and I can change whereabouts they go to if I want to, or I could create a rule for it, but I'm basically doing business and business. And then what will happen is the other transactions come in. So here's the, here's the net transaction. Here's the gross and up and here's the cost. And if I go to reports, although I have a little bit more data on this one, you'll still see that if I did a profit and loss account, then there it is. I've got the 57 now grossed up, but that's because I've got a few more transactions in here. But you'll see that you've got for every transaction, there's the net that comes in and then the grossing up, net grossing up. And then basically that transaction has now been accounted for. So really quick and easy, it's using that conversion method to basically take what's coming in and just be able to make sure it's going in okay. Now your other option, and unfortunately this is only for QuickBooks Online, so this option number two, is to use the App Store. Now by using the App Store, you have a paid for version to be able to connect a secondary app that basically talks between eBay and QuickBooks. And every time you make a transaction, the two are done. Now, I'm gonna do a separate video showing you exactly how that works and do it in more detail. But if you're using QuickBooks Online, that might be the way forward. So if you've got lots and lots and lots of transactions, consider paying the monthly subscription costs so you can utilize that option. 
I think that way is going to be more suited for someone who has lots of transactions and the idea that each and every week having to download and upload some transactions just feels like it's an overkill. And if that's the case, then look at using the app to make sure your life's easier. But just remember that's a paid for service. The solution I've just showed you beforehand, completely free of charge, you just gotta provide an email address. And your final option is outsourcing this whole thing. So all I'm saying is go over to the Boffix website. At the Boffix website, you get a nice little cost calculator letting you know that depending on how many transactions you've got, depends on how much from a bookkeeping point of view, we can get that done for you. And it's completely up to you on that one. Also, do note that we are looking to give you some more discounts as a reseller as well. So if you're an eBay reseller, then do get in touch with us. We've got some preferential rates for you going forward. And there you have it, three ways you can make sure that your eBay managed payments gets into QuickBooks nice and easily. Hopefully you can see by using the functionality we've created that it's a real straightforward process. Our aim is to make this as simple as it possibly can be. We want to give you the tools, so all you have to do is take the information from eBay, put it into our converter, upload it to QuickBooks, and you're done. Hopefully you see the importance of doing it, and hopefully you see that saving time while doing it is obviously going to be beneficial to everyone. So that's it. A quick rundown of how to get eBay payments in efficiently, instead of having to go transaction by transaction and putting it free. I've been Aaron Patrick. It's been an absolute pleasure to do this video for you. If you want any more videos like this, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's obviously going to help the channel grow. And the more that we grow, the more of these sort of functionality we can start putting in place for you. I've got other templates in mind to make your life easier in using QuickBooks. And that's what it's all about. We want to make it efficient for you to get the most out of QuickBooks. Also, don't forget to have a look over at Boffix. Boffix Tax Tips is another YouTube channel. You can get information just like this so you can get the most out of your taxes as well. My name's been Aaron Patrick, that QuickBooks chap, and I will see you in the next video. Bye for now. I can get him out of my head I don't care what we do, everything's real and new Even if we stay in bed My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah You know I want him, nah, 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 nah My heart is saying yeah, 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 yeah